Hey folks, Kayak DIY here for another episode. First off, thank you to all of you guys that have helped us and encouraged us with our videos. We hit 20,000 subscribers here just recently and that is a huge milestone for us. Uh, today we're going to end up going over the Hobie Pro Angler 14, but this is going to actually apply to other Hobie pedal kayaks. And we're going to be installing the Hook 2 series of Lowrance fish finder units. Uh, so these are their latest fish finders and we really haven't seen many other videos out on it. And we're going to be installing uh, one that has the triple shot transducer which that might be hanging up a few of you because the triple shot doesn't easily fit in the Loran system. So what do you do? Well, we're gonna end up showing you a product that allows you to be able to mount those different transducers in your Loran system. So let's get started. Okay, so step one, you're gonna need a battery. Here we're using the Expert Power battery that I have linked in the video description below. We also are going to use some SAE connectors, which are a two-pin connector that work with a lot of third-party accessories. Uh, you want to make sure that the red wire has a female end when you're attaching it to the battery. I'm going to show you what that looks like right here. So as you can see, this one here has the female end. That's the one we want on the battery. Okay, next we're going to take these F2 terminal connectors and we're gonna crimp them onto the wires of the SAE connector. That will allow us to slide this SAE connector right onto the battery terminals. Right there, you can see that they're in, and then we just have to crimp that down. Okay, so right now we're using our wire crimpers and we're crimping it down. We're gonna do this for both the positive and the negative. So we are now taking the F2 terminal connector and applying it to the negative wire on the SAE connector. This will allow us to quickly attach to the battery we have. Okay, so now we're attaching the wire harness that we made to the battery. I like to sometimes wrap the wire harness to the battery using electrical tape when I'm done. That way it holds it on there nice and tight. Okay, so right now we're unpacking the Lowrance Hook 2 uh, items and we found the power cable for the fish finder. And that's what we need next because we need to put an SAE connector on there to match up with the battery. Inside the Lowrance box there's also a 3 amp inline fuse. So we're just taking the fuse out of the package. We're going to put it inside the little holder and then we are going to end up splicing that holder in between a SAE connector that we put on the battery and also between the wiring harness. So here we are using a splice connector for connecting the SAE positive wire to the inline fuse that came with the fish finder. And then we'll do another one of these connections on the other end of that inline fuse and connect it to the positive wire of the actual fish finder harness. Here we're crimping. So after we're done crimping, we get this right now and we're going to end up taking our lighter and uh, end up heating this heat shrink connector and that will create a nice seal around the wires. I really like using the heat shrink connectors so if you can find them I recommend them. Okay so now we're taking the Lowrance wire harness this is the power harness and that's what I'm holding in my right hand and then in the left hand I'm holding the inline fuse that has the SAE connector connected to it which will allow us a quick connection to our battery. Every time I finish a connection I like to test it just by pulling. If the wires don't come out then I know it's good. Once again heat shrink the connector site. Okay so this is the last of the power wire setup. We just need to add this last connector so we can attach the negative wire on the power supply to the negative wire on the SAE connector. Okay, so we need to complete our power harness and to do that we need to attach the negative wire of the SLA two pin connector there to our main power harness that Lowrance gave us. And now it's ready to actually be connected to the battery if we wanted to. 
But first I'm going to end up protecting it by putting this sheath material that I found. Uh, I'll have a link to that online and I zip tie it all together and that just kind of protects those fragile wires. Now we're going to remove the through haul fitting. That's something cool that Hobie has with their low rance ready kayaks. It has this through haul fitting that is makes it very easy to pass wires through uh, the hull of the kayak to go up to like the display unit of your fish finder. This is what they look like and then they have a bunch of different grommets to accommodate your cables that you want to pass through. Some are single, some are double. If you don't have a low rance ready kayak, which that's what this video is about, you would need to drill a one inch hole to accommodate these through hull fittings. But we didn't need to do that. Here you see the double grommet. That's what we're going to be using in this location because we need to pass the transducer cable and the power cable up to the display unit. This is how the whole setup goes. You can see how the through haul fitting comes together. And there is another through haul fitting. It's actually in the location underneath the seat and it's for this area. You're going to pull off the low rance plate and that's going to allow you to run your transducer cable through this hole and it will come up here and then you need to remove the through haul fitting so you need to reach into the hatch area and remove the nut on the back inside area then you can pop out your through haul fitting kind of like so here you'll see and then you'll be able to put the appropriate size grommet in to accommodate the transducer cable and then you'll be able to put your through hull fitting back together. Once the transducer cable is in the hull, you can then run that transducer cable up towards the other through hull fitting. Okay, so there's one last look of the through hull fitting and how it works. And we have taken the transducer cable, we've run it from the underside of the kayak through the little scupper hole into the through hull fitting, and the, it's now inside the hull, the cable of the transducer is. We're then going to run that cable through this hole that you see here and it'll have its own through haul fitting as well. But this through haul fitting is going to have a double grommet like you see here because we're running two cables through one through haul fitting. And we pop that all together, we put the through haul fitting in the hole and then we go to the inside of the kayak here and we put the inside nut on the back side of the through haul fitting. And there you have it. Look at it. Our cables are ready to go and connect up to the display. Now we need to have a place for our battery. Here's what we're doing for our battery mount. We're going to be using the Hobie OEM post mount here, which connects right to the sail post that's on the inside of the kayak. It's just two bolts. It's really easy to put together. It takes seconds. And it accommodates 7 amp hour and 9 amp hour batteries, but it might accommodate some other batteries. I don't know for sure. All I know is we're using a 9 amp hour battery and it fit perfect. Okay, so for some of the low rance units, they have much longer transducers than what the Hobie was originally designed to accommodate. So you need to have an adapter plate and we're going to install that now. Okay, so you already should have removed your low rance cover plate on the bottom of your kayak because you had to install the transducer cable through there, remember? Now you have the Burley Pro adapter plate. This is the key. This is what allows you to accommodate that larger transducer. This company Burley Pro makes a whole bunch of different adapter plates which work really easily and mount right to the factory fasteners. So you mount your transducer into the adapter and then you mount the adapter to the kayak. Okay, so this part of the build got to be a little bit difficult and we actually even consulted a Hobie dealer just to make sure um, that our thoughts were correct. We could not find a mount that would allow us to mount the OEM low rance mount that you see there to the H-Rail. So what we did is we ended up picking up a H-Rail Railblazer mount and then we ended up using a Railblazer camera mount which is this flat square plate that you see here. We removed the threaded bolt that allowed for the camera to attach like a tripod and we drilled some holes in the plate to mount this low rance mount to. And what was nice is because it was a camera mount it rotated. So 
I'll have a link in the video description below for the H-Rail mount setup that we used so that you guys don't get confused um, because I could see where you guys would easily get confused as to what we used to mount the display to the H-Rail. There literally was nothing else that we could find that was available because the fish finder was so new and the Hobie and the, the mount companies hadn't really accommodated for this fish finder yet. Uh, but we're really happy with how this turned out here. Uh, we actually really like this mount setup. So basically, like I said, it's a Hobie uh, Railblaza H-Rail mount with a Railblaza camera mount adapter plate. And then the Lowrance fish finder just mounts to that. Um, we just ended up bolting it right to that camera mount. Uh, so here's the setup. You have to select English or your respective language. Uh, you have to configure what type of units of measure you want, like miles per hour. And here's a look at the maps. It really quickly acquired our GPS signal. I was very impressed with how quickly it did and how smooth of zoom it had. Uh, I don't know of a lot of other units in this price range that have this smooth of GPS uh, zooming. Uh, the zoom in and out feature and the detail of the maps was pretty impressive. So we even actually could see channel markers and other things it looked like in the, the map software. And uh, I know that might be relatively common, but at this price point, uh, I thought this was a pretty good deal uh, for the amount of detail and uh, performance that it was showing. Here's all the different views that you have for the unit. You can look at your traditional sonar. You can use, um, you know, the down imaging type one or side imaging. Uh, you got all different options there. And uh, yeah, it just seems like a very good unit for the money. So I think this is going to be a popular one. I'll have this unit and some of the other new Hook 2 series units linked in the video description below. Uh, this here is the one with the triple shot transducer. And it is the 5 series Hook 2. Here I'm going down to the demo mode just so I can show you guys what a demo looks like on the unit since we're not in the water. That way you can get an idea of what sonar and stuff looks like on it. So here's the general demo. Um, this is what it boots into when you go to demo mode. It kind of talks a little bit about the unit. And then it goes into the sonar and gives you examples of what the sonar will look like. So here's a look at traditional sonar. And as you can see, you can see the arches. That's what you're looking for. Those are the fish. Charging your fish finder battery is really easy and convenient. Because we use the SAE connector for our battery connection, we can use this exact charger to directly plug into our battery. We don't even need to use the adapters that came with the charger. We simply plug the charger directly into the battery and it starts charging. And when you're done charging, you unplug your charger and you plug in your power harness for your fish finder and you're ready to go and hit the water.